okay so in this video i'm going to be addressing a doubt which a lot of people have and that question is if you have a normal battery like this in this case is a duracell alkaline battery aaa you can see that it has a voltage of approximately 1.5 volts has a voltage of approximately 1.5 volts however if you take a rechargeable battery like this then it probably has a voltage of 1.2 volts in most cases whereas some of them state it as 1.25 or 1.3 volts now people generally tend to ask like see if they are both aaa or aa or whichever size here why is it that rechargeable batteries tend to have a lower voltage of 1.2 volts normal have 1.5 volts what is the reason behind this so let me explain that in today's video okay so in that situation you need to understand the battery's working principle and how there is a voltage generated on every battery the voltage that is emf of a battery that is e not cell is generally given by a formula known as ec minus ea sorry ec minus ea which is basically the potential difference between the standard reducing potential of the cathode that is the positive terminal and the anode that is the negative terminal note that a battery is a galvanic cell and because of that the cathode is the positive and the anode is a negative whereas if you look at an electrolytic cell where chemical reactions are performed like electrolysis then the cathode becomes a negative and the anode becomes the positive you need to keep that in mind now if you look at it let's say i'll take an example of a very old school daniel cell the ec that is cathode cathode's reduction potential is plus 0.34 volts whereas for the e anode that is the negative zinc plate it is minus 0.76 volts so when you put 0.34 minus minus 0.76 it becomes a plus addition and therefore the total voltage will come to 1.1 volt now similarly so based on this reaction itself we get the voltages for our batteries too and if you look at this i'm going to be covering alkaline batteries alkaline batteries have a zinc negative and a magne manganese dioxide positive which can result in a total voltage of 1.5 volts and zinc carbon batteries also follow it except that the zinc is a negative but a carbon rod is a positive and they have ammonium chloride this has potassium hydroxide as the electrolyte and zinc is the negative whereas the positive is manganese dioxide this allows for much higher energy density in the battery which is why if you use alkaline batteries your devices last longer compared to zinc carbon batteries now if you look at the aaa batteries this is an nimh nickel metal hydride battery now earlier we used to have nickel cadmium batteries nicd where cadmium was the negative terminal nickel was a positive terminal but again those batteries had problems because of which we now use nickel metal hydride batteries in which the positive is a nickel itself whereas the negative is a metallic hydride some cases it is aluminum hydride some cases it's magnesium hydride and it varies with respect to the manufacturer but it's definitely a metallic hydride which gives a much higher energy density compared to nickel cadmium i'll be covering nicd versus nimh in another video but now coming to the question as to why this voltage is lower that is 1.2 volts for this versus 1.5 volts for this one here is the reason behind it now if we take a look at the discharge curves of all these batteries a normal battery that is alkaline has a discharge curve that is partially parabolic starts off at around 1.6 volts slowly decreases to 1.5 then again it goes slowly like this and then gets low at around maybe 0.8 0.7 volts and all this is how the alkaline and non rechargeable battery start off 1.6 volts when they are fresh out of the packaging slowly start off and then go down to this level which is around 0.8 volts that's where that's how 
Now let me draw it for the nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium types. Now the this graph, if you note, it is like similar to the previous one. It is with respect to this is the time, and this is the voltage. Voltage with respect to the time when a nominal current is drawn. A nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium battery starts off here at around 1.4 volts. It tapers down slowly to 1.25 volts, and at around this one, 1.25 or 1.2 volts in certain cases, it has a discharge curve like this. and it slowly comes down at 3.8 now the difference is that this is not a parabolic curve this is a crowbar shaped curve which means the voltage value is a constant 1.25 volts plus or minus 0.05 throughout the life span of the battery till it discharges to 0% now even though this voltage a nominal voltage of 1.2 volts is slightly lesser it is still okay because your device tends to get a voltage within the prescribed limit of 1.2 plus or minus uh, that is no sorry 1.3 plus or minus 0.1 volts throughout the working of the device now a lot of people like might ask me another question why do some devices tend to malfunction when we use non rechargeable batteries in them and yes it's true even if you look at my thermometer infrared thermometer it does tend to malfunction if i add rechargeable batteries okay so in this thermometer i have fixed my non rechargeable batteries and now let me try to power it on now if you notice it now if you notice i am gen i'm putting a i'm making this uh, thermometer work and give it uh, and get, it gives a reading of 27 degrees because that's the nominal temperature sorry 28 degrees is to 29 degrees is the normal temperature my clock is also showing the same temperature here 28 degrees now let us see what happens when i put rechargeable batteries in the same thermometer okay now i have fixed rechargeable batteries in my thermometer and i'm going to try and make it power on now if you look at it the problem is that uh, now my thermometer is not even turning on and that's a problem here now the reason why this is happening is because of the way the devices are engineered Now if you look at a high quality device let's say like a high quality device like this clock which is which also runs off of two AAA batteries and I'm using rechargeable for them if you use a high quality device like this clock it is designed to work till the voltage of one cell reaches 0.8 volts it the clock will continue working till the voltage of one cell reaches 0.8 volts since it's two cells it will trigger a low voltage cut off only at 1.6 volts which is and this is a nice thing most of the high quality devices that are well engineered will definitely trigger a vol low voltage cut off of 0.8 volts per cell however if you look at a thermometer like mine which is not properly engineered it's not properly engineered and it tend it's pretty low quality it tends to reject a battery at 1.3 volt per cell which is why even if i'm using these alkaline batteries they will i'll have to replace them much faster than if i use them in a high quality device like my clock so when this voltage reaches around 2.6 volt in case of two batteries the thermometer tends to cut off and trigger uh, and reject it for being low batteries now if my batteries were like these two batteries connected in series they'll give approximately 2.4 volts or let's say like 2.6 volts definitely this thermometer is rejecting them as low batteries and um, this is a problem which is faced not just in some of uh, these lower quality devices but at the same time it can become a major problem in case of instrumentation devices now instrumentation devices are designed in such a way that they need a proper battery voltage to show the right readings sometimes instrumentation devices may accept rechargeable batteries turn on 
but at the same time show a wrong reading this is very dangerous especially in case of medical instrumentation where we are measuring blood pressure or oxygen rate and other things so although like there are no i will be making another video on specialized solutions for the same but at the same time as of now there doesn't exist a practical solution which a normal consumer can use the only bet is to go and find a good quality device you might have to pay a little bit more for it but of course it's definitely worth getting a device that accepts rechargeable batteries because you can reduce the running cost in the long run like a pack of two uh, some high quality rechargeable batteries like this will last for up to 15 years 20 years or even 25 years as per some reports whereas these batteries you have to keep purchasing them every 6 months or every 1 year which is not a nice thing so it is better to like get a high quality device which will definitely support these rechargeable batteries not just uh, for supporting rechargeable batteries if you are getting a device like an instrumentation device you definitely have to go for high quality ones that is that however even high quality devices in some cases tend to reject these batteries because they are not engineered for the low voltages so i will try to get some show some videos in which how you can bypass this method and make your devices work with rechargeable batteries but for now there unfortunately doesn't exist a solution for the average consumer the only bet would be that if companies are watching this video then please try to engineer your electronics in such a way that they accept these rechargeable batteries because we cannot have them malfunctioning just because the consumer opted for rechargeable batteries because there are some jurisdictions in which non rechargeable batteries like this are outright banned and not legal to use and only rechargeable batteries can be used there so the devices should not malfunction in this case that's all is my opinion i'm not trying to insult any manufacturer or insult any device nothing like that just that i wish that things should be structured to work on rechargeable batteries okay so i'm concluding this video for now thank you so much for watching like comment share and subscribe stay tuned and i will see you in the next video